Whole building air tightness testing is used to measure how well the building's air barrier system works to prevent air from flowing through the building enclosure. The benefits of good building air tightness include building durability, energy efficiency, improved indoor air quality and comfort. This video provides a step-by-step -step overview on how to successfully perform a whole building air tightness test with focus on testing typical multi-unit residential buildings. The steps are based on the applicable test standards listed in the BC Energy Step Code. The testing shown is from a mid-construction test on a building aiming to reach Step 3 of the BC Energy Step Code. The same approach would be used for the final test after the building is complete. A whole building air tightness test requires careful planning and preparation. It is important to confirm if the whole building can be tested at once as one zone or if it must be separated into multiple zones. Most mid-rise buildings can be tested as one zone, excluding the parkade. The building enclosure surface area is measured from the drawings and used to estimate the number of blower fans needed in the test. The number of fans needed is determined by calculating the potential total airflow based on the maximum building air leakage rate and the maximum airflow that the test fans can provide. This planning work will help the tester and the team on site understand the site preparation needed ahead of time, including space allocation and even power supply. Testing should be completed during or immediately after construction, when the building enclosure is complete and before the building is occupied. A mid-construction test, as shown, is a good way to check that the building is on track to achieve the intended air tightness results when the final test is done. Approximately two weeks before the test, perform a walkthrough to check that the air barrier system is complete, identify areas that require temporary sealing, add them to a pre-test checklist, and arrange the day of logistics. Service and mechanical openings throughout the building air barrier system usually require temporary air sealing, so they're excluded from the testing. Sealing openings is one of the most important aspects of test preparation. It is usually done by the construction crew. Temporary air seals must be robust enough to resist the induced pressures during the testing. Painter's tape is not robust and should only be used to protect finishes beneath temporary air seals. Temporary air sealing also includes ensuring all plumbing drain pipes are sealed and P-traps are filled. This work can often be time-consuming, so allow adequate time for billing preparation prior to the testing. Leading up to and during test day, the weather forecast should be tracked to confirm the temperature and wind conditions will be suitable. For large buildings, ensure the building isn't significantly heated or cooled compared to the outdoors, and consider testing at night when weather is stabilized. All exterior doors and windows must be closed and locked during the testing. Complete a building walkthrough prior to running the quantitative test to check this. One open window or door during the test, even for a second, can impact the test results. Inside the building, airflow from the test equipment must be unobstructed throughout the space so that the building pressure is evenly distributed. In a mid-construction test, this is usually already achieved. In a completed building, the interior doors and other separations usually must be held open. The exact time of the test must be scheduled so that there are no site personnel entering or leaving the building. It is usually best to suspend work while the test is being completed or schedule the test for a portion of the day with no site activity. For measuring pressure during the test, a small tube, known as a pressure tap, is run from outside the building back to the pressure sensor, known as the manometer. In windy conditions, pressure taps are placed at each building elevation to allow averaging. For the blower fan, a modular door closure is used to seal the door opening around it. Note that the door becomes virtually inaccessible once this is in place, so plan accordingly. The blower fan is installed in the door closure and connected to power, controls, and the airflow sensor. During the test, these calibrated fans are used to pressurize and depressurize the whole building. Their airflow is measured along with the pressure across the enclosure. Software from the test equipment manufacturer can be used to streamline the testing process. Testing consists of pressurizing the building to a series of pressure differences and using the measurements to calculate and validate the building air tightness results. For large buildings, pressure differences of 20 to 100 pascals is usually appropriate. 
to ensure even pressure distribution in large buildings. Pressure measurements are taken between interior areas of the building at the highest ceiling elevation, lowest floor elevation, and on the windward side and leeward side. The blower fan is then flipped around and the same measurements are taken with the building depressurized. Note that some air barrier systems can be damaged during mid-construction testing if joints and seals are unsupported. Always ensure the test pressures will not strain the air barrier in its unsupported direction. Test results should be reviewed on site to ensure accuracy prior to disassembly of the testing equipment. The air tightness test report should include air tightness test results, all relevant building information, information on the test standard used, and data validation results. A visual assessment is needed to identify the location and magnitude of air leaks. With infrared thermography, warm building surfaces appear as bright spots, called thermal anomalies, on the IR camera. In cooler weather and with the building heated and pressurized, thermal anomalies from air leakage locations show up during a scan of the outside of the building. A second scan is then done while the building is depressurized and the air leakage locations are cooled back down. Smoke tracer testing is typically completed using theatrical fog applied to the interior of the building while the building is pressurized. Air leakage then appears on the exterior when it leaks through the enclosure. Smoke tracer testing can also be done from the outside with the building depressurized. This testing is best performed with the mid-construction air tightness test when the air barrier can be more easily accessed and repaired if needed. For more information on whole building air tightness testing, refer to the resources available on the BC Housing website, including the illustrated guide to achieving airtight buildings.